guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Classic Collection figures from Playmates Toys. That's right, TMNT Classics is a reality. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago that I was always talking about this being one of my dream toy lines. And finally, Playmates Toys has jumped on the bandwagon of giving us a classics line that gives us some of our favorite characters from our childhood made into some really nice collector quality action figures. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at all four turtles in this same video. Since there's not really a lot of difference between the actual sculpts of the figures, this seems the most appropriate. So let's go ahead and jump right in and take a look at them. Now right off the bat you can see that one of the amazing things about these figures is that they come on some retro looking packages. They're in large blister cards that look just like the blister cards did back in the 80s and 90s. You've got that really cool brick motif with the yellow burst through as if the figure is bu busting through the wall there. You've got the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles logo up top and you have Classic Collection up in the corner of the card back. The cards are the same for all four turtles. The only difference is there's an insert on the blister bubble that has the character's name. Otherwise, there is no distinguishing difference between the card backs, but they do look incredibly nice. Now the back of those packages gives you a little bit of information on exactly where these turtles originated, giving some story from the original comic book and being created into a cartoon series, and lets you know that these turtles come straight out of the classic cartoon series that started in the late 80s. Underneath that we also get some images of the four turtles from that cartoon. The packages on these figures is so nice, I can almost guarantee there's going to be several collectors out there that want to buy these and keep these mint on card. And I almost can't blame them for doing that, because these look really nice in their packaging. But, this is a review after all, so let's rip these bad boys open and take a look at them outside of the packages. Now as I stated, all four turtles utilize the same body, so it is shared parts between all of the figures. The only real difference we have here are the head sculpts, the paint jobs, and the belts that they're wearing, along with the accessories that are included, but the bodies themselves are exactly the same as one another. So the paint job varies between each of the turtles. They just have varying shades of green, but they're really not all that different from one another. Michelangelo's got the darkest skin, and it looks like Donatello has the lightest skin. But they're pretty similar in shade, and they do capture the look of the characters from the cartoon series very well. Each of them are wearing their signature brown belts, and there is some variation going on there. First of all, they do all have the giant letters right there that helps identify the characters, which was something that was created just for that cartoon series. Aside from that, you've got characters like Leonardo and Donatello who have the bandolier strap coming over their shoulder, as the back of their belt actually features a holster for their weapons. Leonardo has two sheaths crossed over one another for his swords to go into. And Donatello has a slot for his bow staff to fit into. The back of Michelangelo's belt has four little notches in it so that you can fit the nunchucks through. And the front of Raphael's belt has little spots so you can put his size in place. So let's go ahead and take a look at the head sculpts of each of these turtles. Michelangelo has a closed mouth look and he's wearing his signature orange bandana. I kind of feel like Michelangelo should be a little happier. These turtles were all a lot happier in that cartoon. I mean, they were full of smiles, they were jokesters, but we all know Michelangelo is the party dude, so I kind of wish his face depicted that a little bit more. But I still can't deny that it is a really nice head sculpt and does a great job of capturing the overall look of the character from the cartoon. He just needs to be a little happier. 
Raphael's face is probably one of my favorites in the bunch. He's got that grimace going on where you can see his teeth on either side of his mouth there. And of course, he's wearing his signature red bandana. He's got some angry brows coming over the eyes there, so he's looking pretty intense. And again, he's a great likeness to the actual cartoon character. And this is certainly one of my favorites of the head sculpts in the bunch. Leonardo is another great head sculpt, featuring the blue signature bandana, and he also kind of has that stern look on his face, with only the crack of his mouth being open there, showing some teeth, but very fitting of the leader of the Turtles. And lastly, let's take a look at Donatello here, featuring his signature purple bandana. Now, here's the big problem with this. He has a terrible paint job on his eyes. And I fear that this may be a common problem across Donatello's, because the few that I've seen in person, the Donatello's have all had wacky eyes like this. It's just a really sloppy paint job on the pupils. Sure, it could probably be easily fixed with a paintbrush, but let's be honest, we shouldn't have to do that. And those wacky eyes do sort of take away from the overall look of this particular figure. Now, each of those turtles do include their signature weapons, so Donatello does include one bow staff, and the good news is that unlike a lot of the other turtle figures out there, they do have painted details on the weapons. So Donatello's bow staff is brown with some nice wood grain details in there, and it's got a white wrap on it. So you can get some really cool poses holding it in both of his hands, or one of his hands there. Leonardo comes with two katana swords, both with blue wraps around the handles, and the rest of it is just a solid silver. They're made of a nice, pretty sturdy plastic, so there's really no pliability going on there, and he looks very cool holding these ready for battle. Raphael includes two sides, both with red wraps around the handles and done in a silver plastic, also very sturdy, so there's not a lot of pliability there. One thing I do like is that you can position these with his fingers going through the blades on the sides. I always love having him have the option to hold them that way, so it does give you some different variations in posing him with the size. And lastly, Michelangelo comes with his signature nunchucks, which are the most impressive of all of these weapons. They have the orange wraps on the handles, and the chain is a real metal chain on these. This is something that we've always dreamed of having on a pair of Michelangelo nunchucks. Now, of course, that means the only thing you can really do is have them dangling out of his hands, but you can get some good two-handed poses out of them, and having actual metal chains there instead of just a piece of plastic really does improve the overall look of these weapons. Now, in addition to the weapons, each of the turtles also comes with their very own sewer cover display base. So their bases are all silver, they have a deco that looks like the lid to a sewer, and they all feature the character's name underneath the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles classic logo. All of the figures have two peg holes in their feet, so they fit snugly on the base, and let me tell you, it's a good thing that these figures all come with bases. It really helps to keep them standing up on your shelf for appropriate display. Let's take a closer look at the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's just so awesome seeing these guys sitting here, isn't it? All lined up like this. It's been so long, and we finally have action figures that look like these characters looked in the cartoon we all grew up with. I think that's pretty fantastic. Now what we want to do here is we're going to focus on the articulation with these guys. Playmates isn't a company that's generally known for having highly articulated action figures. While they've made a lot of really great, really fun toys, you look back at a lot of those lines and you realize that they all have very basic five points of articulation. At least most of the stuff from the 80s and 90s did. These guys have 34 points of articulation each. So let's see if Playmates was able to handle that good enough. 
Now, all four of the turtles, as I've mentioned, are the same body type. So they actually share sculpts. That makes sense because there really wasn't much of a difference between these guys in this cartoon. So the bodies are the same. The only real differences are the head sculpts and then the belts that they're wearing are all fitted for their essential weapons. So looking at one of their articulation is like looking at all of them. So we'll just pick up, uh, we'll, we'll do Donatello here so I can show you how all of the articulation works on these guys. So we got 34 points of articulation. Here's what we got. The head is able to rotate all the way around. It's on a nice little ball joint there so you can kind of rock it. This is one thing I noticed though. The heads pop off very easy if you twist it around. You can see how it works. It's just a large uh, knob right there on the top of the neck and then there's a hole in the bottom of the head. It's very similar to how Masters of the Universe Classics but it's a little bit bigger. So it does snap on good. You don't really have to worry about it falling off. It's not loose, but you can pop it off. So I guess you can switch heads if you want to. Uh, but it does have good movement. You can look left and right with it. You got ball joints at the shoulders there, so you can move up and down, forwards, backwards, twist all around. You got a bicep swivel right there. You got double joints in the elbows. The elbow pad is plastic, and it's permanently attached to the figure, but they did it in such a way where it's right over the middle of the elbow joint. So the elbow joint still moves beautifully. It's really nice. Then you also have a swivel at the wrist. And then you've got this finger articulation. Now I will say that this is a little strange. Uh, each of the figures are individually articulated. So you can see you can move the two regular fingers up and down. The thumb has like a swivel on it, which is really strange. And then also the hinge. Now, the hand articulation is, I understand, I guess, that they want to add some more articulation to it, make it more like a collector figure, but I will say that it looks a little strange when you've got them posed in like a close fist or something. It does have some really weird cuts on the hand, and it looks a little odd. All right, away from the arms there, we have a torso cut right in the middle. It kind of rolls around. You can see Donatello's got like the bandolier strap on his belt, but it's loose enough that it does not get in the way. It doesn't hinder the motion at all. And you can twist them there too. That's also like his waist twist, basically. You got hinge joints at the thighs, so you can get some great splits going on. You can move the legs forwards and backwards. You have thigh cuts, so you can swivel the thighs. The knees are just like the elbows. They're double jointed with the uh, pad going right over the middle of the knee. So great range of motion there. You can see how flexible that is. The ankles have a standard forward-backwards joint. And it also has a swivel at the ankle, so you can spin the feet, which is very nice. And then just like the hands, the toes are articulated, so you can move the toes up and down. So, this guy is chock full of articulation. It's actually very reminiscent of some of the really early Marvel Legends or the Spider-Man classics. You remember when they were individually articulating the toes and the fingers on those figures? That's what this reminds me of. Now, that's going to bring me to my next point, because anybody that collected those understands that articulating the fingers and the feet at the toes doesn't always work the way we want it to. Now the hands are the biggest culprit here. Like I said, I can appreciate the idea behind the figures articulating, but honestly, I could have done without it. The reason for that is they don't grip the weapons as good as you would want them to. Now, you can get all of their weapons held in their hands, and you can close the fingers around the weapons, and they do hold on to them. And you can see I've got everybody holding their weapons, but it's a very loose grip. You can see they don't hold on to it tight, and it's very, very easy to move those fingers out of place so the weapons fall out. I'm going to tell you right now, when you're trying to pose these guys around on your shelf, it's going to be aggravating, because they're going to constantly drop their weapons. That's the problem I was having while filming the, these guys for this review. And what I really worry about is these joints loosening them up, up over time and them never being able to hold onto their weapons. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that doesn't happen. They have the same problem with the feet. The toes are kind of loose and it causes them to fall over a lot. They stand pretty good, but you get them in certain stances, their toes are going to bend and they're going to topple over, which is why it's a fantastic thing they come with these figure stands. Uh, the figure stands are very essential for keeping them standing up, so I'm very, very, very happy that Playmates included that. Uh, for the most part, I would say that the joints are pretty good. I have come across some loose joints on some of the figures. Uh, in particular, my Michelangelo has a very loose arm over here. It does fall down a lot. You can see it just kind of dangles a little bit, and when I'm trying to pose him with his weapon held... I do have problems with his arm just kind of flailing down. Uh, but everybody else seems to have pretty good articulation. So I'm going to say, for the most part, I think Playmates did a great job. 
This is kind of their first endeavor into something super poseable like this, and I think they did pretty good. I could have done without the finger and the toe articulation, but otherwise, I'm pretty happy with these. And you can get some great poses out of them for some awesome ninja stances or some regular stances. A lot of great options for setting them up on your shelf. So there are definitely a few issues with the articulation on these guys, but overall, there is still a lot of good going on with them. You can get some great posing out of them. It looks good. It doesn't look funky or anything like that, with the exception of the fingers on the hands. So if you can live with some loose joints on there and some of the wonkiness going on with the fingers, I say that the articulation on these guys is pretty cool, and hopefully this is something that Playmates can even fine-tune over time if they're planning to give us some more classic-style figures. Alright guys, it's comparison time! Now rather than displaying these guys next to each and every different figure one by one, I figured the best thing to do was a nice group shot, giving you a look at all of the different incarnations of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in action figure form all in one shot. That way it gives you a great idea of the scale differences and the design differences between all of these different figures. Now overall I have to say that I am pretty happy with these guys. They do definitely have their flaws to them. The articulation could use some fixing and the paint jobs could be a little better, specifically in spots like Donatello's eyes. But I do really like the plastic that is used on these figures. It feels nice and sturdy and it doesn't have a weird shininess to it, so it's got a good flat base. And overall I think that the colors used in the paint jobs are very good and they do a great job of capturing the look of the turtles from the animated series. I like the scale of these guys as well. They're a little over 6 inches tall, more almost in the 7 inch scale. So if you put them next to somebody like He-Man from the Masters of the Universe Classics line, they do stand about the same height, but these guys are a little chunkier, being that animated turtle style. Also, if you want to put them next to the Thundercat Classics line of both the 6-inch and the 8-inch version, you can see they're about in the middle of those two figures. So that should give you a pretty good gauge on the actual scale of all of these four figures. Even with the flaws that I found on these figures, I find myself completely excited by them. When I first got them, I felt like a little kid going to the store and picking these up for the first time. They just really have a fun factor that evokes that childhood feeling. I loved playing with Ninja Turtles when I was a kid. It was probably my second most important toy line as a child. And I love the fact that I now finally, after all of these years, own some definitive versions of the Turtles that look like they did in that cartoon series. And being able to add these to my collections with figures like He-Man and Voltron and lion is just icing on the cake because these are the heroes that I grew up watching. And I love that we're getting these really cool collector-friendly versions of all of these awesome 80s characters. So if you were a big fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like I was, I think that these are probably a must-have for your collection, and I would definitely recommend picking these up. Just be a little weary of that articulation, and try to find yourself the best paint jobs possible on those eyes, but otherwise, I think you would be very pleased with them. And I hope that Playmates is planning on giving us more figures in this line, because I would love to see some other characters get figures the way they looked in that cartoon series. This just wouldn't feel complete if we wouldn't get Shredder, or Krang, or Bebop and Rocksteady, or even a Fly Baxter Stockman, or a Casey Jones, or an April O'Neil. <laughs> I could go on and on. I would love to see this line continue. So here's hoping there are a lot of really awesome turtle figures in our future. Until next time.